Hello everybody, uh, this is Mr. McAllen again, and I'm just continuing from where we left off. Uh, in the last segment, we talked about what convergence is, and, and we talked about just the convergence theorem, and now we're going to talk about the nth term test. It's one of the most basic tests, and all it really does is it tells us if a series is going to diverge. It tells us nothing about convergence, but it will tell us if the series diverges. So let's just explain what the nth term test uh, is in, an, in terms of an example. Nth term test. So let's say that you have a series, and the series goes like this. I hope you see the pattern every time we add one more to the series and from this what you can tell is um, you know what a the n is a the n is simply equal to one and if we were to do a limit on a to the n as n, n goes to infinity you would conclude that the limit on that term is going to be one and what that means is every term you add to this series is going to be by adding one more so um, considering that you're looking to see if the series is going to converge to a fixed value, it's clear that uh, this series will diverge. So this is like a quick test. Uh, the test basically says that if you do just a simple limit on the nth term, and if you find out that the limit is anything other than zero, you have to, you can only conclude divergence. Okay? So some people would then ask, well, well what if you can show that the limit, the last term is heading to zero? Well, that doesn't necessarily imply convergence. For example, let's say that a to the n was equal to 1 over n. We can clearly show that, you know, as as we look at this term, if we start out, we have 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, um, and so on, and we'll eventually get out to 1 over n, that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n will in fact be 0. So what this says is that since it went to 0, we just can't say that it diverges. So all we can say at this point is um, it does it at current it does not diverge. All this test really tells you is if you get anything other than zero, you know it diverges. So for example, um, if I had the limit as let's say that the, uh, the series was for a the n was equal to um, 1 plus n. So that series would be 1 plus, uh, it would be 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 dot dot dot. And as you can see here, um, every time we add another figure, we add more to the series. So it's clear that the series will diverge. What it is, is it's a basic starting point to just check before you get into all the other convergence tests, does my series diverge? And it might be an easy way out of the problem just to say that it diverges, but it really doesn't do much more than that. The next thing we do to check for convergence is this uh, method called direct comparison testing. Now, in direct comparison testing, we have to make sure that all terms are positive. We're basically checking for absolute convergence. We want to make sure all of our terms are positive, and if we know all of our terms in the sequence are positive, then we can use this direct comparison test. But what do we compare our function to? We have to find a function similar to what we're trying to test. So, we'll start off with an example, and we'll just consider from our table uh, that we were looking at 
in the last uh, segment, uh, we know that e to the x converges, and it has a polynomial, basically um, its polynomial fit looks like so. And uh, it equals the summation of x to the n over n factorial. And this, uh, in, our, in our table, it stated that for this function, it converges for all x, for all real x values. So because we know that this function converges, we're going to do a comparison. If we have a function that behaves similar to this and has the same relative sequence appearance, and we know that it's less than this known test, for example, um, if we're checking this series uh, of a to the n, and we know, and we want to compare it to the series, let's say a converging series, and we'll call it b to the n. If we know that b to the n is always less than or greater than a to the n for all sequence terms values, then we can conclude by direct comparison that the sum of all the a the n terms converges. And the same thing is true that if, uh, let's say, a to the n, let's say our comparison test, let's say b to the n, that this um, that this summation diverges, if we can show that um, a to the n is greater than b to the n for all uh, terms, n terms, then we can conclude by direct comparison that our a to the n, our summation, will also diverge. So what I plan to show you in the next, ex next example is a comparison test that we can use to prove that our series will converge. So we have an example of um, a, an infinite series where we're asked to prove that the series converges and it looks something like this. Now, upon looking at it, um, if you recognize its similarity to the series that we had for e to the x, you can make a comparison to it. And when you look at it, you would think that, um, and the thing about using the comparison test is you have to notice when they look similar. For example, I mean, there's obviously a similarity between the two of them. But now you have to think and say, well, which we know that this series converges. So that's our basis for comparison. If we can show that this series uh, I'll, I'll label this um, a to the n, and I'll label this one b to the n. If we can show that um, b to the n is greater than a to the n for all n, then we can conclude that a to the n con converges. So let's try it. So we look at uh, 
x to the 2n over n factorial squared. And we compare that to x to the n over n factorial. Well, um, we know that um, if I consider e to the t uh, x squared, that would be x to the 2n over n factorial. And I know that this converges. So then I just simply say, well, x to the 2n over n factorial, which is um, the e to the x squared. We know this one converges for all x. And now when we look at it as a comparison to x to the 2n over um, from this function, because the denominator is going to be squared and n is going to be driven to infinity, we know that this denominator is going to be so much larger than this denominator. And because the numerators are the same, we can conclude that um, a to the n will be less than b to the n. And by direct comparison, we can say that our series, the one in the example, will converge. I hope this has helped for the direct comparison test. And um, the next video, we'll be working on looking at the what absolute convergence is and the ratio test.